So today I am not reviewing a perfume, literally, because this is not a perfume by Juliet Has a Gun. Why does Juliet have a gun? I don't know. But this is a very popular fragrance, not perfume. So this came out in 2010. So it's recent compared to a lot of other perfumes I've reviewed on this channel. Uh, relatively new. And it's also very unique, so from the name, not a perfume, you can guess that there's something uh, amiss or different about it. I'll open this box. Um, the thing about this, here's the sample. Uh, the thing about this is that it really isn't a perfume because there's only one note, and the one note is called Ambrox, uh, sometimes called Ambroxan or Ambroxide. But usually they, you know, perfumery, they just use the word Ambrox. So Ambrox is a chemical compound, which is, I mean, a lot of perfumes are made with chemical co compounds, but this one is unique. Uh, it's also called Cetalox sometimes. Um, it's unique because it's modeled after the scent of uh, Amber Gris, or Grey Amber which is a product derived from um, the sperm whale's digestive system. Uh, if you've ever seen a picture of gray amber, it looks like this weird gray solid rock. Usually they wash up on the beach um, after floating around in the ocean for many months. Am uh, amber ambergris has a very musky animal scent. Um, Pure, pure gray amber doesn't smell that great because uh, it was ha hacked up by a whale somewhere, but um, usually it's, it's uh, used in the base notes of perfumes because it does really have that musky, animalistic, earthy scent. The thing about real gray amber, um, which has been popular for hundreds of years, it's very expensive, hard to get, and a lot of places it's illegal uh, because obtaining it can sometimes harm the whales. So, in the 1950s, people decided, all right, we're just gonna make a synthetic compound um, derived from sage uh, essential oil uh, called Ambrox, and Ambrox pretty much smells like the real gray amber, and there's no need to harm the whales or pay a bunch of money for gray amber. So, the thing about this, this is, uh, Ambrox is the only ingredient in not a perfume. So, um, the thing about that is that it has a very interesting smell. So I'll put some on. I already pretty much know what it smells like, but it's just... So, in general, Ambrox is meant to smell kind of salty, a little bit like skin, but it also has some smooth, almost creamy notes, and then almost kind of minor musky notes. Uh, I find that in this perfume, the opening is strangely floral um, and slightly sweet. And this, also, this fragrance is unique because it pretty much smells a little bit different on everyone because it really interacts with your natural oils. And the main thing here as well is that this isn't a very strong fragrance. Uh, it's certainly, it doesn't have much projection and it isn't, well, the long last, the longevity is a little bit tricky because it's different for everybody, but um, the projection is very intimate. Like you, it's definitely, you know, maybe the person right next to you can smell it, but it's certainly not gonna fill up the room or anything. However, that's not to undersell this, this fragrance because it's, uh, when I first put it on, um, probably a week ago. It was interesting because for for several hours it was just very um, subtle, very subtle. Then after several hours it became stronger all of a sudden and actually I went to, to, went to bed and woke up the next morning and the scent was still there, uh, which pretty much solidifies that it's longer lasting than you would expect. Um, I, again, some people it'll disappear within the hour, maybe into two hours. Uh, for me, it lasted an unusually long time. 
Um, and also I find that the longer uh, that I wear it, at least, it grows a little bit um, sweeter, but also kind of like almonds. Um, and some people find that it's more floral for them, some people find that it's more musky or salty. So again, this is kind of a chameleon perfume, it always is kind of changing around. Because uh, its single ingredient is very versatile, the Ambroxan usually, almost always, is used as a base note for perfume, so it's obviously mixed with a bunch of other notes. But here as the singular note, um, in this fragrance it makes it very unique, very interesting, and it's just constantly evolving. Like right now for me, it smells slightly sweet and slightly salty, and just overall very airy and light. Um, and some people might not like it because it's not um, a super strong perfume, um, but as an intimate perfume, it's just definitely very enjoyable. You know, this is great for like wearing around the house, uh, going out for groceries, just or just you know staying at home, just to enjoy something to smell. You know, this is a great choice, and it's primarily marketed towards women, but I would argue this is a, a very true to form unisex scent because Ambroxan or Ambrox is super unisex. A singular note like that is, you know, it has a little bit of musk, a little bit of sweetness, it's overall very light, um, so I would say it's pretty much unisex. Uh, and it's just a very unique scent, you know, it has a little bit of saltiness, um, and as it changes over time, you know, it becomes more interesting. So really, this is, it's actually kind of I want to say it's in my my new kind of top 10 perfumes because I just like how it changes over time. Perfumes are meant to kind of evolve and, you know, show off their different notes over time, but this one is especially good at that, and I think that makes it really interesting. And um, even though I'm not a big fan of like these weaker perfumes, it still sticks around. It it's, has stuck around longer than I expected it to. So. That's also a bonus. Um, it is a little bit expensive, the full bottle, for what it is, but it's a pretty luxurious perfume, finely crafted, um, and unique. You know, th there's not many fragrances that are out there that dare to use a singular uh, chemical compound to, to mark it as a full perfume. So, um, Overall, I would recommend this perfume. It's definitely something, you know, something that's just cool to have, you know? And uh, I recommend, however, buying a sample first because it's one of those scents that is kind of particular. Uh, it's, uh, you know, some people might, might not be able to stand it and some people might love it. So get a sample first, see if you like it, and then you can see if you want the full bottle. Um, but Overall, it's very pleasant. It reminds me a little bit of of spring or summer, that sort of lightness, um, a little bit of sweetness. But um, overall, that's pretty much all I have to say about Not a Perfume by Juliet Has a Gun. Um, if you have any opinions or recommendations, uh, you could leave those down in the comments below. Um, if you liked the video, leave a like, maybe subscribe, and I make videos throughout the week, so stick around for those.